Hey everyone, and welcome to episode number four of Money Talks. In this episode, the 1943 Steel Penny, also sometimes known as the Silver Cent, although it contains no silver. In the third episode of Money Talks, was featured, I found out recently, by Coin Week. More about that at the end of this episode. Also in this episode, we're going to talk about the 1943 Copper Penny, which I wish I could show you an example of. Unfortunately, I don't have one. This penny came from my grandmother's collection of coins. My grandmother, she didn't have a whole lot of money, and she didn't have a very valuable coin collection. But she had saved some coins, mostly that she picked out from pocket change and some that she got from the Mint in San Francisco. And I was lucky enough, after she passed away, to get her small collection of coins. Among them was this. Actually, I got two of them that were in cardboard with a plastic seal from 1943. I also got a few that weren't in plastic, that uh, clearly were in circulation, and definitely not in very good shape. So what's unusual about this coin? Well, number one, and most obviously, it's silver in color. It's made of steel with a zinc coating. Number two, it's the only regular issue U.S. coin that can be picked up with a magnet. Number three, it contains no copper. Because of the rising value of copper over the years, copper has sunk to a pretty low percentage in US coins. However, this is still the only one that contained zero copper. The steel penny is also reasonably uncommon because between 1947 and 1967, the US Mint collected and destroyed by melting down 100 million steel pennies. So now a brief history. In 1941, copper was needed for the World War II effort. Everything was being rationed, including copper. It was mostly used for ammunition and in artillery. They started asking people to bring their pennies back into circulation. Dig out your penny jars any pennies that might be hoarded or otherwise no longer in circulation, they were asking, please, bring them back into circulation so we can avoid a penny shortage. It failed in so much that they still needed to produce more pennies. And in 1942, they reduced the number of pennies they produced. So by 1943, they were looking for a new solution. They even considered making pennies out of plastic which sounds absurd to us today, but you have to realize in 1943, plastic was just beginning to be mass produced, even though it was invented in 1907. The world's first completely synthetic plastic was invented in New York City in 1907 by Leo Bakeland, but it was the 40s when it started being mass produced. So it sounds absurd to us today, but it was something that was seriously considered at the time. Thankfully, they dismissed using the plastic penny. Instead, they went with a low carbon content, a low grade steel plated with zinc. They continued to use Victor Brenner's 1909 design, which had, of course, the Lincoln image that we see today on the obverse. And then on the reverse, Instead of the Lincoln Memorial, it had wheat with the large letters that say one cent. They started with a sheet of steel, which was coated with zinc. They punched out the planchets and then stamped the coins. By doing it that way, the zinc galvanization didn't cover the edges, leaving the steel exposed. There were three major problems with the steel penny. First, it was easily confused with a dime. Second, vending machines weren't accepting them as most vending machines at the time were equipped with a magnet to prevent people from using steel slugs in the place of a coin. And third, the zinc was oxidizing, leaving a powdery light coating on it, 
And the steel, when in contact with any moisture, like the sweat from people's hands, caused them to rust. Because of the problems with the steel penny, by 1944, they had to come up with a different solution. They used the brass from spent shell casings to produce pennies. Now brass is a combination of copper and zinc. Tin still was not returned to the penny until I believe it was 1947, but it was a couple years. So now, what are these pennies worth? Well, on an average, they're worth about 50 cents. I found a seller on Etsy that was selling them for a dollar a piece, including free shipping. Uh, I found some that were in really good condition that people were asking two and a half dollars for, five dollars, even twenty dollars. But by and large, you can buy rolls of 50 of these things for about five dollars. Now, of course, these values are as of October 2017. But wait! There's more to the story. Apparently, there were a few copper planchets left in the hopper at all three mints, Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. So mistakenly, a few copper pennies were struck. Now, according to Cointracker, these pennies are worth between sixty and $85,000. But now, before you go digging through a stack of old pennies, let me tell you, these pennies are extremely rare. And I'm not just saying extremely rare in the sense of they're extremely rare, but as Coin Week defines, extremely rare means that less than a hundred of them exist. In fact, according to Wayne Herndon, rare pardon me if I pronounce that wrong, Rare Coins Incorporated, 14 came from the Philadelphia Mint, one from the Denver Mint, and six from the San Francisco Mint, which puts the known number of existing copper pennies from 1943 at 21. Now, Wikipedia claims that there are 12 confirmed of the 1943 copy, copper pennies and 40 believed to exist. However, I was not able to confirm uh, Wikipedia's citation on this. For more information on rarity, see CoinWeek's article entitled The Greatest U.S. Coin Collections Ever Auctioned, Part 1. More common than the 1943 copper penny is the counterfeit 1943 copper penny. Now, a common technique for counterfeiting them was to take a 1943 steel penny and put a copper plating on it, which is a relatively easy technique. The second most common way of counterfeiting a 1943 copper penny was to take a 1948 penny and scrape off part of the A so that it looks like a three. If you think you found a 1943 copper penny, congratulations, <laughs> it's worth quite a bit of money. Uh, but there's four easy ways you can check to see if it's counterfeit. Number one, magnet. If a magnet picks it up, it's a steel penny coated with copper. Number two, examine the three closely. Compare it to a 1943 steel penny. The three has a little tail on it where if the eight was scratched away to look like a three, it won't have that little tail. Third, the emboss, the stamp, is much deeper on a 1943 copper penny. The coin presses were set to a higher pressure in order to press into the steel. And so when the copper planchets went through, it pressed into it more deeply. It's noticeable, especially around that outer circle on the penny, but the whole design itself is more deeply uh, pressed into the coin. And fourth, you can weigh it. A 1943 steel penny weighs 2.70 grams. The 1948 copper penny weighs 3.11 grams. 
So what is the value of a copper 1943 penny? Let me turn to my notes. In 1996, a 1940, uh, 1943 Denver minted copper penny was sold by Superior Stamp and Coins for $82,500. In that same year, they sold a San Francisco minted 1943 copper penny for $49,500. More recently, in 2001, a San Francisco minted 1943 copper penny sold for $62,100. These numbers are how I believe Cointracker came up with their value for the penny. However, according to ABC News, in 2012, a 1943 copper penny sold for a million dollars to Bob R. Simpson, Bob R. Simpson, co-chair of the Texas Rangers. The Simpson, <clears throat> the Simpson coin collection then boasted of having a complete set of minted Philadelphia, minted San Francisco, and minted Denver 1943 copper pennies in the collection probably the only complete collection of those in the world. In order to do so, they had paid 1.7 million, Bob R. Simpson paid 1.7 million in 2010 for perhaps the only known Denver minted copy, copper penny, although that's if we believe the other numbers to be true. And just as a footnote, in 1983, the U.S. Mint switched to a zinc penny with a copper veneer. Now, if you've made it this far, I promise to tell you at the beginning about my feature in Coin Week. The last episode of Money Talks, episode 3, was filmed in December of 2008, nine years ago nearly. In October of 2012, Coin Week made an article called Five YouTube videos about coins that are hilariously bad, or something to that. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so you can see. It has been five years since they called my money talks uh, hilariously bad. And if you do look at that article, read the conclusion. The conclusion, they were actually pretty nice about it, saying like, you know, hey, you know, these guys seem like good guys. We'd love to sit down and have a beer with them and talk coins. They clearly don't know anything about coins. But, you know, we write about coins and we don't always know everything either. So they were kind of nice about it at the end. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm flattered just to have gotten the exposure. And at the time, I didn't do any research. I wasn't trying to present it as uh, an expert video. What I used to do back then is just talk about my thoughts and beliefs and feelings about coins. They were just observations I made. They weren't based on any research or anything. I threw out some pretty wild theories and I was just having fun with it. I didn't expect it to really be taken seriously. You know, no publicity is bad publicity. I went back and looked at my stats for 2012 and there was actually a nice spike in views on the uh, silver dollar coin video, uh, which I'll link here uh, below if you want to see it. It's, it's, it's pretty hilariously bad if you actually do the research on the, <laughs> on the silver dollar. But in their article it kind of outlines uh, why, why they found it amusing and some, some of the theories that I proposed in that. But I will say I'm definitely not a coin expert, but nowadays uh, I do research now before I make YouTube videos. So I did a fair amount of research before I made this video. To the best of my knowledge, everything here is uh, true and correct. Um, but certainly I'm relying on a web search. But if you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing. I don't do a lot of uh, videos on coins. Actually, am planning to do another one on bicentennial quarters, but mostly I make videos about a variety of things, and I'll, I hope you'll take a look at a few of them. If you do, we'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.